is the all-star break. The curtain has come down on the first half of the regular season in professional baseball. And that means we are just a couple days away from the Mallorpalooza 2023 variety, the talent show. We've decided to do it this week on uh, our third show of the week. So this is our first show, obviously, as we kick off the week here, Sunday night into Monday, and then Monday into Tuesday, and Tuesday into Wednesday, we will have the Mallorpalooza. So if you'd like to enter that, if you have a skill, a talent that you think the men, women, and children in America need to hear, save that. For the Mallorpalooza 2023, there will be amazing prize packages, including currency for the show, like golden tickets, things like that. And and who knows? We might even give you some old mail that we have laying around the building here. So that will be coming up on our third show of the week. So that will be after the All-Star Game, Tuesday into Wednesday, the Mallorpalooza. So if you got a song, a comedy routine, uh, we've had uh, amazing contributions uh, over the years from different people. So we'll see what we have this year. If you're thinking about doing it, let us know. Try to secure a spot. They fill up quickly, and we want to make sure you get a slot in the Mallorpalooza. But we're talking baseball here. The Home Run Derby is on Monday night here in Seattle, the All-Star Game on Tuesday night. On Sunday not every team played on Sunday. They, they've tried to scatter the schedule because they they want to give the teams the proper amount of time off during the All-Star break. So that means some teams did not play on Sunday, and then other teams that played on Sunday will be off an extra day as they'll st- kind of scatter the start of the second half, unofficial start of the second half of the season. But on Sunday, they had the MLB draft. Yes, the draft has had many changes over the years. It's always held this time of the year. And occasionally the MLB draft has been held in New Jersey. Uh, I don't recall it being held at the All-Star game prior to this. Maybe it was, and I just wasn't paying attention. But it happened in Seattle at the Seahawks Stadium, right next door in the sports complex there in Seattle to where the Mariners play and where the All-Star game is going to be played. They They don't want to destroy the field, so they put it next door. In the football stadium, and with the first pick in the 2023 MLB draft, the winners of the draft lottery, your Pittsburgh Pirates, the Buccos, the Yinzers, selecting that phenom right-handed pitcher from LSU, Paul Skeens. He goes number one in the entire MLB draft. This guy's built like a bull. If you watched any of LSU over the last month or so that been, been highlighted on TV, uh, this guy's uh, 6'6", 230, and throws over 100 miles an hour. That normally gets you drafted number one, and he's said to be the top pitching prospect in over a decade, almost 15 years since they've seen a guy with this much talent. And then uh, following that up with the number two, with the number two pick, the Nationals selected Dylan Cruz, also of LSU. So it's the first time teammates had gone back-to-back. I know you're an MLB draft historian, unless you are not an MLB draft historian, but that was the first time. But don't bear the lead, my man. There's something that happened that overshadowed the top picks in the 2023 MLB draft, and I I, I don't know that you know where I'm going with this. Maybe not. We have some audio we're about to play here, but the Seattle fans, and this was a mishmash, not just Seattle fans. You had fans who had traveled to Seattle from other cities but it was mostly people from the Pacific Northwest who were on hand. And Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball, came out. If you didn't see this, well, you didn't hear it. We have the audio uh, from the Entertainment and Sports Network, the fledgling operation out of Bristol, Connecticut. But take a listen. Here's how it sounded as Rob Manfred came to the podium to announce the first pick in the MLB draft. The commissioner, Rob Manfred, takes the stage for the first time tonight. Oh! Good evening. Good evening. On behalf of Major League Baseball, (laughs) welcome to the 2023 draft. Yeah. Woo. (laughs) This All-Star Week is already off to an incredible start. Yes, it is. With you getting booed. I agree with you. It's off to an amazing start. The commissioner getting booed there. Just wonderful. Uh, Boo flat, a chorus of boo flat there for the commissioner of baseball. So let us discuss the question. What is your takeaway from Rob Manford being drowned out by the boo? 
news at the MLB draft. So I've got Blindfold, Aztec, and Armageddon. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make some cheesecake, which Rod, the ambassador of Bakersfield, brought in here, some cheesecake. So, A, uh, Rob Manford, it is chicken soup for the soul to see this guy get booed. I loved it. I kept watching it over and over and over and over and over and over. It was awesome. Thank God for the Internet. You can watch these things over and over and over. Well-deserved. This good-for-nothing varmint of a commissioner and the fans in Seattle knowing the score, right? The people who are at the draft, these are hard old baseball people. You don't go to the MLB draft if you're just a regular baseball fan. So these hard old baseball people were there, and they were – they were upset. Some said, why were they upset? Why were, why were they angry? Well, could it be, I don't know, playing in the American League West, is it possible, is it conceivable that they're upset that Rob Manford allowed a division opponent, I don't know, to cheat and win the World Series? Could that be the reason there is angst at the commissioner of Major League Baseball? Could it be the Seattle Mariners who had a dog food team for a generation that they put out on the field? despite promises by Major League Baseball corporate that if they built a new ballpark, they'd have good teams regularly? Hasn't happened. Has not happened. Last good Mariner team, Ichiro was a young guy playing for the Mariners. So Rob Manford, the thing about this, he's so obtuse. That's the fascinating thing about Rob Manford, how obtuse this guy is. And he's also allowed the athletics to leave Oakland and head to Las Vegas, although not official. That That's ruffled some feathers. More on that coming up. Later in the hour, uh, we'll get to that coming up in a bit. But Rob Manford really should go out and do these public appearances blindfolded. Uh, he should be blindfolded because this was a fiesta, right? It was a fiesta for the baseball fans there, and Rob Manford was the pinata. And you get a swing, you get a swing, you get a swing. Watch out for the candy to come tumbling out. And the candy, of course, dum-dums. That would be the candy there. You get a lollipop, you get a lollipop, you get a lollipop. Now, Page two. Moving away from Rob Manford, the New York Yankees finished the unofficial ending of the first half of the season in style by losing, and they also made a change they have not done in a very long time. The New York Yankees took their hitting coach, somebody named Dylan Lawson. We don't even know who that is, hitting coach for the New York Yankees, and we don't need to know who that is because he was whacked as hitting coach of the Yankees, as he was relieved of his duties by the Bronx Bombers. Gone. See you later. They lost to the Cubs on Sunday to close out the first half. The Pinstripers are fifth in baseball in home runs. The Bronx Bombers living up to their moniker. They are, however, 18th in runs scored. So how do you classify? How do you classify the Yankees firing their hitting coach? This is... Aztec-like, not San Diego State Aztec-like, but Aztec-like. Uh, it is. It's a human sacrifice. And I would argue that this did not come from the general manager of the Yankees, that this came from ownership. We played some sound of the spawn of the boss, the son of George Steinbrenner there, who popped up on radio confused by why the Yankee fans were upset with the way the team was playing. But this was not likely Cashman's call. I'll tell you why. Brian Cashman has not fired a general man. He's not fired as a general manager. He's not fired a manager or a coach, pitching coach, hitting coach, first base coach, third base coach, any a coach in 25 years as general manager of the Yankees. He had never done this. My memory when I was a kid, the Yankees fired their pitching coach or their manager every other season or their hitting coach. But it's been 25 years, an entire generation, and the Yankees had not done a move like this until now, and uh, they do it. And Cashman's motto has always been to sit on his hands. One of the reasons Aaron Boone continues on is, well, it's not his fault. Uh, as long as Aaron Boone follows the three-ring binder and whatever the analytics department tells him to do, everything's fine here. we got nothing to worry about, blah, 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 blah. But the fact that the Yankees, there are, last I checked, 30 teams in the cartel of baseball. The Yankees are 29th in hits in all of baseball, the All-Star Rate. The Yankees are 29th in actual base hits, doubles, triples, home runs, all collective hits. 
And the only team that's worse is a minor league team out of Oakland, the Athletics. That's the only team in baseball that has fewer hits than the New York Yankees. And so that's likely why the hitting coach uh, went away. But Aaron Boone, he just continues on. He does this thing. All right, final part of this. We are at the All-Star break. We have now played more than half the games in baseball under the new rules. They dramatically changed the way the game is played this year. They put a clock in baseball, among other changes, to speed, and speed up the game. Yeah, speed up the game. No, oh, the game is too slow. The kids need this. They need this. All right, so the question on this, how would you grade the pitch clock change to baseball over the first half of the season? So on the Maller Report card, reluctantly, I give this an A-. minus. I would have given it an A+, plus, but I'm upset there were not more meltdowns here. I was anticipating more, uh, more of an explosion, a kaboom in baseball. We did not get that. We did not get the kaboom here. So I give it an A minus. This was supposed to be a lot of combustible uh, emotion by the the players and the coaches, and we had a few blowups. They were relatively minor, uh, and, and so you, you're still setting up for a combustible situation when the playoffs come around. But that's down the road. We're grading it midway through the season here. At the halfway point, the rank and file have been able to adjust in baseball, so they've been able to figure things out. And uh, despite Max Scherzer going bananas for the Mets and a couple of other coaches that went ballistic, uh, there has not been the amount of shrapnel that we were anticipating flying around other places. So it's a, it's a rather mild situation, which I would argue is actually bad. I think it would be better if we had more blow-ups and more of that kind of, of nonsense, but we haven't had that here, and it's within the margin of error. So it's within the margin of error here. And as far as the amount of time shaved off your average Major League game, 26 minutes. Baseball games this season are 26 minutes shorter than they were last year. So you're getting less to watch. Is this is this an amazing – I haven't really noticed – I mean, the games are going quicker, sure. But is my life improved because the games are going... No, they're going quicker. I, my life has not improved. Uh, that has not been the the case here. Maybe yours has. If you're a newspaper writer, there's still those things around. But even that, everything's for the online world. There's no deadlines in the online world. The only way this has actually affected us is it's helped us because often th- this show, we start at 11 o'clock on the West Coast and we would often get preempted by Dodger baseball or the other affiliates we have up and down the West Coast to carry West Coast baseball games because they regularly would would fly into the, you know, the the first window of the show. So we don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, and so the, the attendance is up 8%. You had a new star in L.A. De La Cruz of the Cincinnati Reds. You got a couple old guys that are doing well, Ronald Lacuna Jr. and Shohei Otani. Bruce Bochy's got the Rangers turned around here. But it's it's a mixed bag because you look at the dark side, you've got television Armageddon. So uh, baseball with the pitch clock, everything went well, but you've got television Armageddon where the regional cable systems changed a lot. There's not as many people. The cord cutters are actually winning, and so it's caused baseball to look to Armageddon where they've had to take their broadcast in-house. They don't seem to understand that there's fewer people paying, so the money's going to go down. They think that they have won the hearts, minds, and souls of the public, the hoi polloi, and they're going to continue to buy baseball games. So we'll see if that works out or not. But when you look at it, the Padres were supposed to be good. They blow. The Mets were supposed to be good. They suck. And then teams that were supposed to be god-awful, like the Marlins and the Diamondbacks, are currently uh, good teams. All the White Sox are supposed to be good. They stink. I know Mark's excited about that. He's he's working on the show.